everybody, Arnold Waffman here. So you know one of my passions is taking photos of the tanks, obviously, the reef, the salt water, the uh, fresh waters, brackish, whatever. Big fan of it. And at first I just took photos with the phone, got tired of it, and started using my actual DSLR. And the results obviously speak for themselves. Now as I've shared in different forums, including fish forums and reef to reef, the main question is, what settings did I use? Were there any special tricks? Did I use the orange lenses like you would get for the iPhone? So I kind of want to share this video to show you how to get incredible photos not using your phone. Use an ADSLR or if you have an advanced point and shoot. So let's go over that. And today we're going to focus on my reef tank here, but you can really use these principles for any tank. So let's begin. So I promised that I was going to mention why I hate these orange lenses. It's not that I hate the orange lenses, although in principle I really don't like anything that removes any part of the color spectrum, uh, but that's a discussion for a little bit later. It's just in general, I don't like using a phone. I mean, it doesn't matter how good your phone is, compared to a modern uh, DSLR, and when I say modern, I mean the same time that the phone is being made, that DSLR is always going to give you better photos, not just because you have a better array of lenses and thus a better depth of field, but in reality, more light is going to be able to touch that sensor at the same time. The bigger the sensor, the more light it can capture, just the less noise you're going to have. But in reality, I just don't like orange lenses. I really don't. Now, if you have a lot of things I'm going to talk about today, they do involve using the LED lights. If you have T5s, this is a cheat, but pick up a super bright white LED like this one. You'll see why in a little bit as I talk about modifying these, I'm telling you, it's gonna give you better results with a DSLR than just using an orange filter. But this all really depends on the co combination of T5 bulbs that you have. If you're mostly blue plus and purple plus, yeah, you're probably definitely gonna need that orange lens. But if you have some of the coral plus in there, uh, if you're not having as many of the actinics, then literally setting up one of these lights directly above alongside your T5s really will make a difference. The other thing also is that the way that the DSLR picks up color is gonna be a lot different than the way your phone picks up color. I've always picked on Canon cameras because Canon is very sensitive to blue. If I'm using a LED light and I'm trying to make purple, which is the red and blue together, the Canon is going to be a lot more sensitive to the blue than for example, the Nikon. But I stopped complaining as much until I started using the iPhone, which will literally pick up any bit of blue, even if it's not really in or visible to the human eye. So just thinking about that again, don't think automatically you're going to need an orange lens until you try with your DSLR. Now the next question is, do I need a DSLR? Yes and no. You know, there are some point and shoots that do give you manual control of your aperture, your ISO, your shutter speed. So that's going to help you a little bit. But for that depth of field, for that macro that you're going to see later on in this video, you are most certainly going to need a DSLR. The body is not as important as the lenses. I'm using a 70D, but you could do what you're about to see even with a T2i, which is a much older camera you can probably pick up use for a couple hundred bucks. Lenses are always more important than the body. A good quality lens will always beat a good quality body. If you don't believe me, ask any photographer. Crappy body, let's say a T2i with a 1755 or even a 35L versus a brand new or let's say a 5D Mark III with an 1855-35 lens, a kit lens basically, they're going to tell you the former, not the latter. The last thing you're really going to need is a knowledge of photography. If you understood none of what I just said, this video is probably not going to be for you and it might be. If you do understand photography terms, great. If you don't and you still want to learn, stick around because you can still copy some of the settings that you're about to see and experiment. That's really the best way to learn. That's how I learned. But experiment with different things and you'll get a good grasp. So let's begin. First of all, we're going to start by using just some general wide shots. Now I'm not talking wide angles, just wide shots of the entire tank, not really focusing on the finer details of coral. For that, we're going to use a 1755 lens. This is the Canon EFS. I am not using an L series lens. I actually prefer the 1755 for multiple reasons. It is L series quality, but it is not an L series lens because one, it's an EFS mount, which means you cannot really put this with a full frame camera. You can, but your mirror is going to stick and jam. Yeah, so don't do that. Uh, but it is 2.8 constant. This means that even if I, as I zoom in from 17 to 55, that 2.8 aperture, nice and wide open, will be there. 
Super clear, uh, crisp lens and optics all the way through. So again, you do get that L series features, except it's not an L series or an EF mount, it's an EFS. And it's not exactly dust and waterproof like a lot of the L series lenses are. But this is a great affordable lens, relatively affordable for a professional lens. Let's begin with doing some of the settings and see what happens. So before we start, go ahead and get prepared. Clean your tank completely. If you don't run socks, run socks for a couple of days, get all the floating crap to try to just get that all out of there. Clean your glass from both sides. Do a water change if you need to, whatever it takes to get your water, your tank to look as crystal clear as possible. Turn off all external lights. You don't want the light behind you bouncing. Most importantly, make sure to clean your lenses and you're going to shoot in raw. Now, not JPEG or anything like that. Raw is going to give you literally all the hard data that the sensor captures. You see when a DSLR or camera in general takes photos, it takes it in raw and then it does the post-processing directly in the camera itself and outputs that JPEG. We're not going to do that. We're going to do the post-processing ourselves, which means the photos are going to look super bland when we load it into the computer. And that's fine. It's going to look blander than it looks into your viewfinder because depending on your viewfinder or your preview, depending on how you have your preview screen, it's going to show you what some basic post-processes done on it. So I choose my camera to have my preview be as what we call faithful mode, which gives me a pretty good accuracy. Uh, again, that's all personal preference, but all that matters is you shoot in raw, we're gonna load this into Lightroom as well. Very first thing that we'll wanna do is kind of set the settings, ideally what I would like it to be. Now I'm gonna try to show this as best as I can on the phone so it looks as close to the camera representation. I like to start with a medium level ISO. For that, I think 800 is the magic number, particularly with the 70D. I will go as high as 1600 and in low cases with the macro lens, low light cases, I'll do 32, but I never really wanna go higher than 16. 800 is just a nice in between. Now, as far as the shutter speed, I'll take it to 100 to 125. Now, in that case, I can see my tank's a little bit dark, so I'm actually going to kick it back up to 1600 ISO. The reason I want a 125 is fish move, and they move fast. In reality, you want to try shooting as close to 1 200th of, an, uh, 1 200th of shutter speed. And then your aperture, you know, the lower your aperture is, meaning the wider it is, the brighter the photo is because more light is coming in. But light is coming in in both parallel rays of light and non-collinear rays of light. These non-collinear rays of light distort the image. That is why when you squint, things look a little bit sharper because you're blocking those non-parallel, LKA, non-collinear rays of light. Now, with that being said, the higher that your aperture is, the less light you get, but the sharper the image is. And I don't mean just sharp as far as in focus, but you don't have that depth of field where this is gonna be sharper than what's in the background or vice versa, whichever way you focus. That depth of field really narrows down. Hopefully that was a easy to understand 30 second explanation. Now, as far as where to start the aperture, depends on the lens. This particular lens is super crispy between five, six and six and a half, but I'm a big fan of F8. Uh, there's an old photography phase, it's a phrase that says, I don't believe in fate, but I believe in F8. So you can see that this actually gives me some nice coloration. What we want to avoid is a lot of this super bright white here, this blown out area. Let's go ahead and go into the info here. So you'll actually see on the histogram throughout the time that it's peaking on the left hand side, the left hand side is darks, and the right hand side is your brighter colors. So we definitely want it peaking more towards the left hand side. In reality, in post, anything that's too dark, you can bring it up. But anything that's blown out, those that's lost data, meaning there's nothing in that pixel except white, so you really can't recover it. So it's better to earn the side of caution, be a little bit darker if you need to be. That being said, do not get in the habit of saying, oh, we'll fix it in post. I wanna make it look as good in person. Now, the thing I like about the SLR is that until you get a really good understanding your colors, you can actually take a, uh, let's take a test photo here for just a second. There we go. And I can see my RGB and it looks like the blue is about as even with the green and the red, which means there's a nice color balance in there overall. We'll talk about color balance in a bit. 
but you can get what we call a gray neutral card and sometimes I'll stick it in the water, take a picture of that. That will help with the color contrast. If you don't have a gray neutral card, don't worry about it. So for now, there's a little rock right in the center where my Mandarin is right now that we're gonna use to white balance. Again, we'll cover that in a bit when we talk about Lightroom in the next video. Uh, the next thing that I wanna do is again, remember what I said, if you have the T5s, let's pretend these are T5s for a second, then adding a little bit of a white LED like you see here absolutely changes everything. Look at that, ready? One, and then two. It's a huge difference there. Now when you're using LED lights, this becomes a lot easier. So let's log into the AI Prime app. Live demo, and let's bring up that UV. Now I really want to bring that UV where I can see just enough of a glare in there or a reflection of the corals. At this point, it might make sense to turn off your autofocus and do a manual focus. So let's go to manual focus right here for just a second. I'm just going to zoom in here for a sec so I can see. There we go. Perfect. Okay. There we go. All right. So let's bring the cool white back down. So I like to bring that UV almost all the way up, a halfway actually, and then the royal blue, I want that royal blue to really come out. Now in the case of the AI Primes, the reason I chose the AI Primes is for that secondary blue channel that gives me almost an aquamarine blue. Uh, the violet, you can bring that up a little bit too. It'll definitely help bring some of the pinks out. Remember that when light hits something in the water, it is very different than when it hits something out of the water. Uh, your reds are going to bring different colors out when they're underwater just because of the way that the wave or the actual light spectrum travels. So for red, we're actually going to bring that up quite a bit and you may not see the difference right now, but once you go into editing, I promise you it makes all the difference in the world. I do bring a little bit of that green in and you may see the difference a little bit. You'll definitely see with some of the blues, it does even out some of the blues. Uh, let's see here. You can actually see the histogram change as I move some of these things around. So now that we've got the tank exactly what we want it, that's too much blue. You may like how it looks in there, but I promise you when you're editing, you're going to lose a lot of color information. So now we're going to bring the cool whites up a little bit. At this point, go ahead and zoom in and take a look. And ask yourself, okay, are these corals popping the way I'd like them to? Now, in the case of my Recordias, no, no, they are not. So, we're going to bring that down a little bit. And perfect. Let's go ahead and uh, try that out here. We're going to take this photo and later we're going to edit it. Now, you can manual zoom or manual focus or autofocus. In this case, I'm going to trust my autofocus because I know it's going to do well. Again, we can see that the red, green, and blue is pretty balanced on the histogram. There isn't one over the other. And now let's zoom in. Now remember, every lens has a different focal length, so we'll see how well it can do. Super important to know is that you can see right now how the camera is angled a bit. That's not going to do you any good because there is a refraction in the water. So if you want a nice crisp image, your camera needs to be parallel to the tank glass. When you bring up the camera right close to it, resist the urge of going like this and like this because it's not going to be in focus or it's going to be diffracted. Also, the other thing you want to be careful about is you don't want that camera scraping against the glass because you can scratch it if you're not careful. Uh, one of the things that they do sell is they do sell a rubber hood that goes to the front of your lens. You can now push that against the glass and you'll be fine. Do I have a rubber hood? Of course not. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. Let's say I want a nice little shot here of my Recordias. So I zoomed into the Recordias. In the case of the 1755, it has what's called a clutch focus, where I can override the focus even while it's on manual mode. I, or on an automatic mode. You can override the focus even while it's on automatic mode. I am not a fan of that. I still prefer putting it in manual mode because it's going to want to refocus there. One of the important things to really think about as you're taking photos is using the remote, which I don't have with me right now. Uh, the remote does allow you to have a little bit better focus because watch what happens. I'm going to go to zoom in here just for a second. And you can see that as I push the button down, the whole camera moves. This may not sound like a big deal because we're doing a nice wide shot, 
but I promise you that once it's time to do macro shots, it's going to be a pain where the sun doesn't shine. Let's go ahead and I'll try something else here. So now we're going to grab a photo of the Ganyapora, little pink one right there. Now remember what I said, you don't ever want to have that camera tilted down too far. In this case, we should be all right. It's not diffracted too badly. Beautiful. So that gives me some really cool shots. But now let's talk about the proper way to get those awesome close-up shots. If you have a camera with a large amount of megapixels, you can just crop and zoom in and it'll look great on Facebook. But when you print it, it's not going to look great because you're basically blowing up a photo that you already cropped a small section of. And if you really want the right focus at the right time, get yourself a macro lens. Now in this case, I am going to use the 100 millimeter macro lens. It is down to 2.8, but I'm not going to shoot a 2.8 with a macro. The depth of field of a macro lens is insane. If you're using a DSLR, the practicality of it is that you can also video record with it. You will follow pretty much the same things that I was telling you about. Although I'd recommend shooting at 24p at 30 frames a second. This is going to look a little bit better in terms of that whole cinematic feel. And most importantly, then you can really bring down that ISO. So make that video look super crisp because you don't need to have that high shutter speed there. But uh, macro lenses, 100%. You want to have a tripod with a fluid head. This tripod broke on me, so the head, not so fluid. Um, but you definitely want to have a fluid head so you can easily move it around and it stays sturdy. You want to have it on manual focus. And most of these macro lenses are prime. Prime basically means that there is no zooming or any kind of that function. It's just at the focal length that it is specified. In this case, it's 100 millimeter, and I'm gonna set it to be limited since I just need a very limited focal range. So I'm lowering my tripod because then I can just bring this up and down, so that way I'm not tilting it. All right, so let's take a photo of this absolutely stunning frog spawn right here. And we're gonna bring this all the way back. Now, what do we see here? Well. This guy is way too dark, which is fine. I was expecting that. I'm actually gonna bring the aperture down to let's say five, six here. What it doesn't show you is me hitting the zoom button on the preview, which allows me to have a little bit better control over the focusing. Tentacles in there, focus as sharp as you can. Let's see what happens. So there it is there. In this case, we're going to go ahead and shut off the histogram once I take the photo because I know that my settings are good. Now you can see what I mean is that if I bring this down to 5.6, it looks nice and clean. But now as I bring this down to 2.8, it's slightly softer all the way around. So I bring this up, it gets darker, but it's a lot more in contrast. Now, if I want to do that, I may want to take this even as high as 6400 ISO. By the time I do the noise reduction, it's almost going to be the same feel. Let's zoom in. That's what I said. You really want to experiment. Look at that sharpness right there. Beautiful. Now what I'm doing here is I uh, unzoomed out of there and now instead of using the shutter, I'm tapping the screen so there's as, min as little minimal movement or there's as little movement in the camera as possible. If you're using the AI app, make sure you keep it open otherwise it will shut back down on you. And don't forget, you can adjust your lights as you need to. So in this case, it's a little darker than I'd like. So I'm going to bring in some of the white here and then I'm going to bring up some of that purple. Let's zoom in. Remember what I said, never, you always want to be as parallel as possible. And rule of thirds. And you know what? Sometimes you just watch that flow and you appreciate it and you just have to record it. And now we're just gonna record it. Maybe I'll make it into a GIF, share it on my Instagram. You don't know, but my goodness, look at that. And then don't be afraid to play with your focus and really just have it go where it's out of focus. Oh, look at that perfect capture of my little Chromie there hiding. Oh, there's two of them. How perfect is that? That is good timing right there. And now I'm just going to slowly bring that focus to the other side as the chromies swim away. In this case, I might ramp up my power heads, whether you're using Apex or some other control, and really 
really use the tools that you have in your tank to change the way that your tank moves to create some beautiful scapes. So uh, let's take a look and see how that Ghani Pora video looked. And now I'm actually gonna kick kick that up quite a bit to 13. Again, we're at 3200 ISO. I know I said it was gonna be noisy, but we'll be all right. We're gonna zoom in a little bit. I really wanna get that flower pot detail that Ghanians are known for. Damn, look at that, okay. So we're gonna check and see how that looks. Now let's talk about getting photos of fish. Now, this is where you, unless if you've got a really good tripod, do it to it. In my case, my tripod broke, so time to take it out. Now you may ask, well, how the hell are you going to hold that steady? There's a very easy way of doing it. I'm going to hold my, I don't, let me make sure I hold it here, but basically I'm going to have my strap here, make it as short as I can until, um, you know, unless you like it longer like I do, and then push down. So basically as I'm filming here or taking photos, I'm using my neck as a stabilizer. Hopefully that shows in the video there. You can use a remote and maybe have somebody take the photo or just hold it in your hand here. But let's go ahead and try here. And I know I'm gonna be in front of the camera, but sorry. So we're gonna shoot at F8, 125, and let's do at 1600. And you know what, let's try to get, let's try to get the firefish here. And this is where, sometimes this even just helps us pushing it against your body and do not breathe because you will move the camera. Your first few photos are absolutely gonna suck as he started learning how to do this. Most importantly, tracking fish. You know, the faster the fish, the harder. You know, if you've got a Midas Blenny, that's an excellent way to start. Let's see, where are you at here? I'm gonna actually bring this back down to an F4. And I hold down the lens. You wanna make sure you have it on fast so when you hold it down, it just starts taking photos because the first one is always gonna be blurry. Now, fresh water, it's a lot easier because you don't usually have these blue lights, but the concept still applies. You wanna have a fast shutter speed, a fairly high aperture, meaning tightly closed there, and your ISO is not gonna be as important because we're gonna fix that in post. But at the same time, don't get used to saying, hey, I'm gonna fix that in post. The most important part is nail your colors right to the get-go. Now, again, if you've got the T5s and you're heavy on blues, that orange lens may be important. But try without the orange lens, try adding an external white LED. Uh, this is the, oh, what is it called? The Walmart brand, the Hyper Tough. This is a battery powered one. It's got like a thing you can put a bolt, you can attach that to a tripod or hang it over your tank or something. And that'll really work. Put a diffuser or something and make sure you don't get the super bright, like 20,000 lumens because you're just gonna blind your poor fish. Now that we've got that long video out of the way, let's go ahead and load this into Lightroom like I mentioned. So that's gonna be the next video. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe. I did not see a lot of tutorials regarding this, especially for us, you know, fish fanatics. So please make sure to share and subscribe. I can't say that enough. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great night and God bless.